What's up, guys? So we did start with Reservoir Dogs. That movie was phenomenal. We've been working our way through the Tarantino verse, and we're basically at what's this movie called? Is it Django or Django? We're not sure because we haven't seen it, but we'll find out. Yeah, I'm not sure if that D is silent. But anyways, man, I'm really excited to watch this movie because we've seen so many bangers from Tarantino at this point. I don't think a single movie is missed. And to be honest, you guys said that he stepped it up a hundredfold with this one. So um, that's a really, really high mark to hit. Yes. I thought Inglorious Bastards was pretty phenomenal yes. coming off that. I'm really excited to watch this film, man. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't want to talk too much because I don't want to spoil the mood, man. I'm right in that zone. I'm ready to get into it. Okay, so it's got Leonardo DiCaprio, Samuel L. Jackson. Nice. And then I saw uh, Jamie Foxx. Is that his name? Mm. Walton Coggins, isn't that the guy on uh, Fallout? I think so. Oh, there he is. Oh, no. That zoom out shot was funny. It was like a cartoon. I like the Western feel already. Epic music start. <laughs> I don't know why you would shackle them by their feet like that, man, because that'd be really inefficient to walk. Don't it seem like it? Seems a little excessive. Somewhere in Texas, 1858. Who's that stumbling around in the dark? Calm yourself, gentlemen. I mean you no harm. What the hell? He's got a tooth on it. It's like Sweet Tooth from that video game. I'm looking for a pair of slave traders that go by the name of the Speck Brothers. Twisted Metal. Don't know about that. I'm Dr. King Schultz. This is my horse, Fritz. <laughs> I wish to parlay with you. Speak English. Hello, you poor devils. Is there one what? amongst you who was formerly a resident of the Karukan Plantation? I'm from the Karukan Plantation. That horse said. I know. <laughs> What's your name? Django. Then you're exactly the one I'm looking for. Oh, we sought him out. Do you know who the Brittle Brothers are? There was overseers at the Karukan Plantation. If you were to see any of these three gentlemen again, would you recognize them? Stop talking to him like that. I'm simply a customer trying to conduct a transaction. I don't care. Move it. Did you simply get carried away with your dramatic gesture, or are you pointing your weapon at me with lethal intention? Very well. Dang. The quickest dang gunslinger I ever saw. That's a dentist with skills. So is that like a front or something? Uh, I guess, because... <laughs> <laughs> he's undercover. He's gotta be. <clears throat> Damn, we got us a Western up in here, don't we? Let's go. I'm sorry to put a bullet in your beast, but I didn't want you to do anything rash before you had a moment to come to your senses. <laughs> you shot Roscoe! Well, and you killed Ace! Nah, I only shot your brother once he threatened to shoot me. And I do believe I have five witnesses who can attest to that fact. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, pardon the interruption. <laughs> like, what? If you were to see the little brothers again, you could recognize him. Yeah. Mr. Speck, how much for young Django here? Oh, man. Could you hold this for a moment? <laughs> the weapon. I take that winter coat the dear departed Speck left behind. Look at that guy right there. He's like, Don't you touch my brother's coat. Ah! One hundred. Twenty and five for young Django here. I'm afraid I will require a bill of sale. You go to hell, dentist. No worries. I come prepared. <laughs> Thank you. This guy's a character. <laughs> that man held that lantern because he wanted to, not because he had to. You gentlemen have two choices. You could lift that beast off the remaining speck, then carry him to the nearest town, which would be at least 37 miles back the way you came. No, that's thanks. crazy as hell. <laughs> Take that rifle, put a bullet in his head, and then make your way to a more enlightened area of this country. And on the off chance there are any astronomy aficionados amongst you, the North Star is that one. <laughs> this guy. 
Damn, he got promoted, didn't he? They don't even know what to think about what just happened. Oh, he got his hat and all that. Now, wait a minute, fellas. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Talk uh -oh. about what, brother? You got to be reasonable in a situation like this. <laughs> Blueberry, didn't I give you my last apple? <laughs> Blueberry. No. Uh oh. No, please. <laughs> I guess they picked the second choice. To be honest, at least he died really easy. Yeah. That's an easy death. <laughs> I know he made him walk 37 miles. Like, that's crazy. That's what I'm saying. They're sitting there walking that long shackled. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Two. <laughs> that thing's getting it. <laughs> so he knows something about the Brittle Brothers. That's why he needs him. Mm-hmm. They like they founded a bank. I know. <laughs> this is like Red Dead Redemption. I love it. What's everybody staring at? They ain't never seen no on the horse before. Good morning, innkeeper. We won't be open for another hour. What the hell you think you're doing, boy? Oh, they kicked him out. <laughs> Get the sheriff, not the marshal. <laughs> Alas. Shut down, my boy. I'm glad that he freed him and all, but he's putting my boy in some risky situations. He's like Ordell. He freed him and now he's getting him to do some stuff. Right. You're talking about on Jackie Brown? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but these days I practice a new profession. Bounty hunter. The state places a bounty on a man's head. I track that man. I find that man. I kill that man. That's why he's the dentist thing. I show okay. that corpse to the authorities, proving yes indeed I truly have killed him, at which point the authorities pay me the bounty. What's the bounty? It's like a reward. You kill people and they give you a reward? Certain people, yeah. I would like the two of us to enter into an agreement. I'm looking for the Brittle Brothers. And so far as I don't know what they look like. But you do. You travel with me until we find them. Where are we going? I hear at least two of them are overseeing up in Gatlinburg, but I don't know where. That means we visit every plantation in Gatlinburg till we find them. You point them out and I kill them. I agreed to give you your freedom, $25 per brittle brother. Here comes the sheriff. Oh, here comes that sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys. Fun's over. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why y'all want to come into my town and start trouble? You ain't got nothing better to do than to come into Bill Shop's town. Not Bill Shop. <laughs> Dang. You just point blank the sheriff. Dang. <laughs> Look at her, she was limping off, poor thing. No, can get the marshal. That's where that song came from. <laughs> I shot the sherry. Can we just leave? After you. He's like, can't we just leave? <laughs> Want two men, two rivals up on this roof? You and his team. <laughs> Come out right now with your hands over your head, and I mean right now. I have relieved myself of all weapons. I am ready to step outside. I trust I shan't be shot down in the street before I've had my day in court. That's wild. <laughs> Do I have your word as a lawman not to shoot me down like a dog in the street? <laughs> That's crazy, though. Ain't nobody going to cheat the hangman in my town. Fair enough, Marshal. Here we come. They're a little tense out there. <laughs> <laughs> you think? May I address you and your deputies and apparently the entire town of Daughtry as to the incident that just occurred? <laughs> the man lying dead in the dirt is actually a wanted outlaw by the name of Willard Peck. With no a price way. on his head of $200. I'm aware this is probably disconcerting news. <laughs> Three years ago, he was rustling cattle from the BC Corrigan Cattle Company of Lubbock, Texas. He's like, now, I'll mess with Texas. <laughs> is a warrant made out by circuit court judge Henry Allen Laudermilk of Austin, Texas. In other words, Marshal, you owe me $200. <laughs> <laughs> He's this slick, This movie's going crazy He's right slick. now. This is insane. <laughs> He's like, what the heck? <laughs> After this brill business is behind us, you'll be a free man. That's a cool spot. What's your plan after that? Buy my wife, buy freedom. Mm. Mm. Do most slaves believe in marriage? Me and my wife do. That's all that matters. 
Django. You got sand, Django. Is that Stanley? Uh, I was about to say that. I want you to burn the runaway eye right here in his cheek. And the girl, too. An R? And I want you to take him to the Greenville auction and sell him. You will sell him cheap. Hmm. What is her name? Brumilda. She wasn't born on the Peruvian plantation. She was raised by a German mistress, by Shafts. Your slave wife speaks German and her name is Brunilde von Schaft? Yep. Does he know her? Or is he just familiar with the... Well, maybe because she's like German? Right. I don't... Like the owners are German or something? We'll be putting on an act. <laughs> that's too Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. No. <laughs> he looks like that boy from Dune. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy Shalit or yeah. whatever. You can never break character. The crimson chin. <laughs> and your character is that of the valet. You may choose your character's costume. He's gonna let me pick up my own clothes. Yeah, but of course. What's he gonna pick? Let's see. He's Thanks. either about to look crazy <laughs> or tough. He had a hole. <laughs> like he picked the most vibrant thing he could find, didn't he? <laughs> it's against the law for to ride horses in this territory this is my valet my valet does not walk he's owning it isn't he he's a free man he can ride what he pleases not on my property he don't want no ideas spreading this is my valet django and these are our horses tony and fritz <laughs> <laughs> i wish to purchase one of your gals well what if i was to say i don't like you and i wouldn't sell you a tinker's damn a tinker's <laughs> damn <laughs> Mr. Bennett, <laughs> I have 5,000 things I might say that could change your mind. Ooh. <laughs> well, come on inside and get yourself something cool to drink. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> That's crazy. They have a little horse straddling station mm -hmm. in their front yard. Uh, Bettina. Yes, sir, Big Daddy. Uh, what's your Jimmy name again? What's she just calling him? Big Daddy. <laughs> Yes, sir, Big Daddy. Uh, <laughs> what's your Jimmy's name again? Django isn't a slave. Django is a free man, you understand? You want I should treat him like white folks? No. That's not what I said. <laughs> what's the name of that Pecklewood boy from town that works with the glass? Uh, <laughs> you know Jerry, don't you, sugar? Yes, I'm Big Daddy. Well, that's it then. You just treat him like you would Jerry. Oh my gosh. That was so uncomfortable. <laughs> but why are they the calling him Big Daddy though? Is the big house. Because he lives in the big house. <laughs> so you really free? Yes, I was free. You mean you want to dress like that? <laughs> <laughs> Play them. I'm looking for three white men, three brothers overseas. The name is Brittle. I don't know them. They could be using a different name. They would have come to the plantation this past year. You mean the Schaefers? Maybe. Well, one's over in that field. Oh, damn. Got a telescope. Oh, man, Cooper, they're going to appreciate this. Now, she, 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 she working the house, John. You can mess her skin up, and you're going to mess her up. She ain't going to be worth nothing. She ain't going to be worth the damn thing. Oh. So that's why they got separated, because they tried to leave. As a punishment, they did it. That's why they said sell them cheap, just to yeah. torture them. Yeah. I like the way you bag, boy. Yeah, so they gotta get his ass, huh? Go get that white man I came here with. Here the moment. Is that Bible pages on, on his chest? <laughs> I guess so. Can he interfere? Like, or is it gonna cause like a, a lot? Like too much drama, yeah. Right. We'll see if you break eggs again. Dang, they're fragile. You remember me? the way you die boy i was about to say isn't everybody else armed oh he's fumbling oh oh oh, oh he's got the whip <laughs> untie the lady first he's not playing a part anymore right <laughs> that's big john that's little Josh. they're gonna have a whole army against them soon though He's the one high telling it across that field right now. Oh, shoot. Oh. He can't escape. You sure that's him? Yeah. Positive? I don't know. 
You don't know if you're positive? I don't know what positive means. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's Ellis Brittle. Damn, what a shot. Oh, wow. I'm positive he did. <laughs> Uh-oh. Everybody calm He's going to hit him with the same bit, the same bit. <laughs> I am Dr. King Schultz, a legal representative of the criminal justice system of the United States of America. The man to my left is Django Freeman. He's my deputy. <laughs> he gave him a last name. <laughs> These are wanted men. The warrant states dead or alive. We were operating within our legal boundaries. So that guy's going to owe him money after this. <laughs> right. That's three people, though. So that's going to be like 600. Well, 75. 75 a piece. Mm. Well, that's what he's going to give Django, so maybe we'll see how much. Satisfied? <laughs> he's drinking the fine details. Mm -hmm. Get off my land. Load up the bodies as quickly as you can. And let's get out of here. <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> so he's just riding around, completely just putting himself at all the risk in the world because he won't just tell people why he's there. <laughs> Well, he has to go undercover because <laughs> yeah. they'll know why they'll he's run. there. Yeah. <laughs> but you could speak to the owner privately and then go conduct he's your business. He's kind of the best bounty hunter because he's good with his, like, words and stuff. <laughs> That's him, son. Well, he's from the north, I guess. Isn't that Jonah Hill? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably gonna be hard to ride a horse with that on my face. Now, unless they start shooting first, nobody shoot them. I can't see. F out of this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who made this goddamn? Willard's wife. You make your own goddamn match. <laughs> I could have cut it better than this. What about yeah. you, Robert? Can you see? <laughs> Not too good. I mean, Not if I don't good. move my head, I can see you pretty good, more or less. That is John Hill. <laughs> Anybody bring any extra bags? No, nobody brought an extra bag. <laughs> is that Willard? <laughs> Do we have to wear them when we ride? If you don't wear them as you ride up, that just defeats the purpose. <laughs> you know, I watched my wife work all day, get 30 bags together. <laughs> And all I can hear is criticize, criticize, criticize. <laughs> Don't ask me your mind for nothing. <laughs> what? He said, ask for me and mine. <laughs> we all think the bag was a nice idea. But not pointing any fingers, they could have been done better. <laughs> so how about no bags this time, but next time. <laughs> Oh my god, so that's the backstory of why they're wearing them. <laughs> they decided for it. <laughs> well, where are they? Oh, he doesn't. They would know that if they didn't have the bags on their head. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dang. I got him now. Can I just pause it? Yeah. Guys, I just want to say, like, there's been times in my life where I've scrolled past this movie and I saw the cover art for it, you know, the thumbnail for this movie, and I just never thought it was going to be a goofy comedy like yeah. this. I thought it was going to be, like, a damn serious film. This is crazy. That is too funny that that lady worked on in her whole, the holes in the back. <laughs> what did he say? He said, criticize, criticize, criticize. criticize. <laughs> she worked all day getting them potato sacks up. <laughs> Would you care to? <laughs> He's getting away. Okay. Did it hit him or the horse though? Him. Oh. Got him. The kid's a natural. Yeah, he trained another bounty hunter up. No, I think he was already trained. He didn't teach him how to do that. How you know Broomhilda's first masters was German? Gunilda is a German name. Gunilda is the name of a character in the most popular of all the German legends. It's a story about Brunhilde? Well, every German knows that story. Brunhilde was a princess. She was a daughter of Wotan, god of all gods. Her father is really mad at her, so he puts her on top of the mountain. 
It's a German legend. There's always going to be a mountain in there somewhere. <laughs> and he puts a fire-breathing dragon there to guard the mountain. And he surrounds her in a circle of hellfire. Unless a hero arises brave enough to save her. That's a really familiar story, bro. A fellow named Siegfried. He scales the mountain. And he walks through hellfire. Because Brunilde's worth it. Aww. I know how you feel. I think I'm just starting to realize that. I don't doubt that one day you'll save your lady love. Slave auction town in Mississippi isn't the place for you to visit, free or not. How do you like the bounty hunting business? Kill white folks and they pay you for it? <laughs> What's not to like? How'd you like to partner up for the winter? What you mean partner up? Like a part-time so job? work with me through the winter till the snow melts? Oh, seasonal. <laughs> I give you a third of my bounties. When the snow melts, I'll take you to Greenville myself. Why you care what happened to me? I've never given anybody their freedom before. And now that I have, I feel vaguely responsible for you. As a German, I'm obliged to help you on your quest to rescue your beloved Brunhilde. Oh, I hope he does. Hey, I like that outfit. Countries lying in the winding road. Yeah, a little less flashy, more bounty hunter esque. Right. I like his style too, though. Yeah, that guy was like he founded a water company. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it had a D on it. Bend me down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> down the highway. Like a north wind whistling down the sky. Damn, that man's had a full life, hasn't he? Off to hunt some bounties. Let's go. And I carry it with me and I sing it loud. I love the music Tarantino picks. Mm hmm. Damn, that horse has full-wheel drive. Oh, that's the hot spring. Or something. You got her. What happened to me now when I shoot white folks for money? His sons would. Well, good. We'll have a lot of one with them. That's cold-blooded. <laughs> better than most of them get. Put down the rifle. Don't worry, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> He's about to read what he did. I read it aloud. Wanted, dead or alive. Smitty Bacall and the Smitty Bacall okay. gang for murder and robbery. Seven zero zero zero. Seven thousand. One thousand and five hundred dollars for each of his gang Mem members. Damn, that guy pays, huh? Uh huh. That is who Smitty Bacall is. That would be a hard picture to identify someone. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, what? I'd be like... <laughs> do you want to save your wife by doing what I do? This is what I do. This corpse is worth $7,000. <laughs> oh, he thought he was joking? You need to keep this city call handbill. You always keep the handbill of your first bounty. <laughs> There's some bounty rituals. Like your first dollar you make yeah. when you open a business. Me million dollar. I mean me first dollar. Oops. <laughs> I was about to say Mr. Krabs made a million dollars. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that was Look actually the, so slow. Look at the um boots or snowshoes. Have you ever seen anyone that can actually do that? Yeah, him, that first guy. In real life, they're they're quick. Unbelievably quick, actually. No, he got it. No, but I'm saying the way he drew the gun was slow. In real life, they're not slow. You think I'm exaggerating? In real life, they do it in about a ninth of that time. <laughs> this is like Kill Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, who lives here? We're about to meet a character. How the hell are you? Who the hell are you got there? Bad Chuck Wilson and meaner Bobby Lau. And Get yourself some coffee. Pretty good. I was thinking he was going to be wild as hell, like the guy on Fallout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's just a casual sheriff. Yeah. Paying the bounties up. And after a very cold and a very profitable winter, Django and Dr. Schultz came down from the mountains and headed for dot, dot, dot. Mississippi. Am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I. Am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I. Related to Funshaft. R on right cheek. Calvin Candy. Candyland. Ain't no slave in her to candle. That's where your wife is. Oh, that place must be infamous. Yeah. Let's just hope she works in the house, not in the field. Oh, no. She pretty. And she talk good, too. But when they tow her back up and then they 
about to run away all on the cheap. They got damned. They're gonna try to make her a comfort girl. What's a comfort? Oh, not while I got my gun. Oh, did we offer to buy? Say a man wants to buy a horse. He walks up to the farmer's farm. The farmer says, no. Nope. I'm still that horse. But now you're a horse thief and they hang horse thieves. We need a bill of sale. May I offer an alternative plan of action? Not to buy the horse, the farm. Mm -hmm. Makes an offer so ridiculous. We're gonna offer to buy a candy lane? How much do you know about Mandingo fighting? You know what that is? Bonjour. We're here to see Mr. Calvin. Ain't right. So we're about to meet this guy. Already? You want me to play a black slaver? Ain't nothing lower than a black slave. He's about to go undercover. This is about to be wild. <laughs> this is Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> Said two, two. Dr. Schultz. <laughs> How was that him? Good to see you again. So this is the one-eyed Charlie I've heard so much about. I wonder how they got Cleopatra right there. <laughs> it's the Cleopatra Club. It said it. How was it? Calvin's father's father put me through law school. One could almost say I was raised to be Calvin's lawyer. One could almost say you said. What did you say? <laughs> I said. I think he's just being cheeky. <laughs> he doesn't speak French. Don't speak French to him. It'll embarrass him. <laughs> Why do you want to get in the Mandingo business? Ah. I'm bored. <laughs> Something's telling me this guy's wild as hell, even for those times. <laughs> There's gonna be blood all over his leisure area. You don't wear a hat in the house, white man, even I know that. Use your weight, boy, use your weight! Ah, oh, he's not doing what I told him, for God's sake. Obnoxious. He's like the coach. <laughs> right. Oh, you gotta pull it out of the fire, Leon. Okay. Either hit him or you ain't! This is stressful. <laughs> there you go. Ah. ah. Do what I told you. Oh. What is that for? Ah. Oh, no. He said, oh, no, Luigi. Ah. ah. Okay. You know Tuco from Breaking Bad? You know how he's just so crazy as hell? That's what this guy reminds me of. He's the only character I can think of like that. Finish. Oh, man. That guy was really goofy with those gloves. What's your name? Django. Can you spell it? D-J-A-N-G-O. The D is silent. <laughs> I know. Get Fred here a tall beer. You enjoy that boy. You've earned it. <laughs> so obnoxious. I heard you've been telling everybody that Mandingos ain't no damn good. Ain't nothing nobody is selling is worth buying. I'm curious. What makes you such a Mandingo expert? I'm curious what makes you so curious. What did you say, boy? Calm down, Butch. You do not have anything to drink. Can I get you a tasty refreshment? <laughs> yes. You are neophyte. I'm simply trying to ascertain if this cowboy here is taking advantage of you. Guys, just let me know in the comments, what type of pool table is that? Do you see that? Do you see the shape of it? It's tiny. Oh, it's like square. Right. It looks like a swimming pool. Yeah, let me know what that is. I've never seen that. I would have never even recognize it. <laughs> I was under the impression when you granted me an audience, it would be to discuss business. Oh, we weren't talking business. <laughs> that coconut. <laughs> Mogi tells me you looked over my African flesh and you was none too impressed, huh? Not for top dollar. You won't sell your best. But if I made you an offer so ridiculous, you'd be forced to consider it. <laughs> Who knows what could happen? <laughs> and what do you consider ridiculous? $12,000. I thought I was going to say 50. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. It's hard to like calculate what the currency yeah, is worth. Yeah, because right? that guy was worth 7,000 dead. But so he I was keeps like... bragging to him about $75 in your pocket. That's $75 better get him a lot. Yeah. Beautiful morning, isn't it? You couldn't have picked a better one. Won't you take a ride with us here in the Victoria? That guy is suspicious of them. Exceptional. Black bright boy here will come if not frequent, more frequent. The name of the game is keep up, not catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Touch your guns, you die. Everybody calm down. 
There he goes. There's um, the whole thing. The no harm done. Now take your hand off your pistol. Oh, that's him, isn't it? Oh, I'm gonna go walking in the moonlight with you. You wanna hold my hand? <laughs> that was such awkward banter, though, right? Uh, it was. It's like that one time we went to that store. When you and I like were like arguing together, like in a weird way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was weird. <laughs> I was not expecting Rick Ross. I was about to say I knew this singer. I hope he gets his ear. Oh, he's mad. You got a problem with your eyeball, boy? Oh, sir. He is a rambunctious sword, ain't he? <laughs> is he impressed with him? Is that I think he... so. He's intrigued by yeah. him or something. It would be good if I could have a confidential strategy meeting with my confidant. You mind telling me what the hell you're doing? I confirmed that Pomeo is at Candyland. Don't get so carried away with your retribution. Stop antagonizing Candy. I'm not antagonizing. I'm intriguing him. I would call a man who had me kill another man in front of his son. What you said was, was that this is my world. He didn't take none of his advice. <laughs> that was a general gist. <laughs> See you at Candyland. I'm nervous about this. <laughs> That's awkward because they had to stop everybody for them to have a meeting. I would kind of be suspicious of that, I think, if I was them. Ten. Dart. I can't fight no more, Miss Your Candy. Yes, you can. He might come down if you move the dogs. Come on now, boy. Get on out that tree. How far he get off property? About twenty miles off property. Pretty far because that lean he got. My man's on lean over here, ain't he? <laughs> what is wrong with him? Please, Miss Your Candy. I ain't got it in me no nah, more. Nah, 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 nah. I done paid five hundred dollars for you. I expect to get five fights so he roll over and play dead. You fought three fights. But I won every one. Yes, you did. So this guy wants to be like Dana I'll White. I paid $500. I want five goddamn fights. Why my $500? You gonna reimburse me? You even know what reimburse me? I'll reimburse you. But that pissed him off, made him an enemy. He said, you will? He just tired of you toying with him, is all. But we ain't paying a penny for that picking any. You heard him? <laughs> He's a damn cartoon character. I ain't never seen it like you ever in his life. Damn right. <laughs> Oh, have I? That Marsha and the bitches send D'Artagnan to have. Mm. He's like Ramsey, huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Is he staring into his eyes the whole time? Mm hmm. The boss looks a little green around the gills. He just ain't used to seeing a man ripped apart by dogs, is all. We rode five hours so you could show off your stock. Let's get to it. That guy's like, well, I'll be. <laughs> Follow me. This is so uncomfortable, right? Yeah. It's awkward because both of these men just aren't saying what they want to say. Oh, man. But he's about the mission. That's the truth. Yeah. Samuel. You know, I was wondering if he was going to be in this. Damn, he looks so old, doesn't he? Oh, is he mad? Does he look mad? Like offended or something? Maybe. The best Samuel L. Jackson character of all time, though, has to be Jackie Brown. Or Dell. He was so cool in that. His ponytail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and his, like, hat. Hello! Steven, my boy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my ass. <laughs> What's the matter? Why are you so honor? You miss me? Huh? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I miss you like a, a baby. <laughs> miss Mammy <Mammoth> Titty. <laughs> 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 Who this? On that name, it's Snowball. <laughs> you wanna know my name or the name of my horse? You ask me. <laughs> I'll snatch your black ass off that name, Daddy. Steven, 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 Steven. Let's keep it funny. Tango <laughs> here is a Freeman. This him. <laughs> He's so. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, this here is Django. <laughs> you two wanna hate each other? <laughs> you two wanna hate each other? <laughs> Is he jealous? Hold on, can you pause it for one second? Remember Django said at the thing, he said the the head of the household guy is like the lowest of the yeah, low. Yeah, the lowest of the low. So I think they like have animosity because of that or something. Right, but basically this guy right here, it's almost like he's ass kissing so hard he's jealous that this guy gets to be on a horse. He's like, I'm the one who kissed ass right. harder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what the heck? <laughs> like he's just, like his banter with this guy, you know, you can tell he's been working on that a long time. Yeah, it's funny though. <laughs> 
All right. This might be Samuel L's best right here. I just don't know how I'm getting this junk on YouTube. <laughs> hey, uh, how did how did your favorite reactor put this on YouTube without getting their channel taken down? Because I'm gonna have to edit this one. Django and his friend in gray here, Doctor Schultz, are customers. Yes, sir. Him, I understand, but I don't know why I got to take lip yeah, off this. I have to know why. <laughs> Do you understand? That spinning night. Go up in the guest bedroom to get too ready. <laughs> He's gonna stay in the big house. <laughs> Well, you got a problem with that? Oh, no, I ain't got no problem with it. If you ain't got no problem with burning the bed, the sheets, the pillowcase. <laughs> they are mine to burn. Now, your problem right now is making a good impression. <laughs> Daddy, rolling over in this goddamn grave right now. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, it's getting worse and worse. <laughs> ah. Even this guy laughed. Just... <laughs> that post, was a real sister! laugh. There she is! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Schultz, Look at her. this attractive Southern Belle is my widowed sister. You are a tonic for tired eyes. Yeah, I believe you mentioned she spoke German. Ah, yes, Hildy, what about him? Uh, do, do you think before the demonstration you could send around to my room? <laughs> you little dickens, you. <laughs> Go fetch Hildy, get her cleaned up and smell real nice and sent over to Dr. Schultz. <laughs> Hildy in the hot bar. What's she doing there? What you think she doing hmm. now? She been punished. What's she do? She run off again. Uh-oh. They, they brung her back this morning. I bet it's some soft as dogs tear her up. They was out chasing D'Artagnan's. Now, she a little beat up. How long she been in the box? All damn day. Same. Take her out. But Miss your candy, she run off. You take her ass out. It is time for me to rest my tired eyes. <laughs> Thank goodness. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. That is sister. Yeah. Oh my god. Get ass up out of there. Come here. Say your name is Schultz. Schultz. <laughs> Schultz. That dude is a trip. Samuel L. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is she gonna see him? <laughs> do you think by the end of the movie he's gonna blow up this house? <laughs> he's like gonna, they don't ingore his bastards. They're gonna do something crazy at it. Right. <laughs> something crazy's gonna happen. <laughs> Is this the first one that didn't have chapters? You know what? You could be right. Everyone just looks so itchy. That's the thing about this time. I just don't think it'd be comfortable to walk around in any of these clothes. You know they had mites and stuff all in it. Yeah. I feel like they're dr dressed unique for the times of these. this particular house right here. Hello, ladies. They're Thanks really wealthy, right? It's a pleasure to meet you. Go ahead, girl. Speak a little German. And I shall bring. I'm much obliged. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Ich bin mir dessen bewusst, dass Sie eine ganze Weile kein Deutsch mehr. Ich spreche jetzt nur für den Fall mit Ihnen Deutsch, dass Candys Leute uns zuhören. Wie schön Sie sind. Danke. I was mean, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ein gemeinsamer Freund von uns beiden. Haben einige Mühen auf uns genommen, um sie zu finden, mein Fräulein, um sie zu retten. Es ist meine und unseres gemeinsamen Freundes Absicht, sie für immer von hier wegzuholen. Wenn? Das kann ich Ihnen nicht sagen. That poor girl probably Wo thinks that. Like the worst, probably. Right, yeah. He's toying with her or something. hinter dieser Tür. Versprechen Sie mir, dass Sie nicht schreien werden. Hey, little troublemaker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She probably thought she'd never see him you again. You silver tongue devil, you. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, girl. I Get your big pretty ass out of the way. You know you like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you know what I like. <laughs> what? He's hell. <laughs> the best three by far were Samson, Goldie, and Eskimo Joe. Samson's your best. You will never sell him. And I can see why. He's a champion. Samson's a champion. The mother too pretty good. Okay, I don't know what oh. to say. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> you have to understand, Monsieur Condi. Do you see that statue behind them? No, what is it? A wrestling statue? No. <laughs> I want to be able to bill him as the Black Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one. Fight game that appreciates the value of showmanship more than Monsieur Calvin J. Candy. Nobody. Here. But one must not forget the most important thing in <laughs> the, the co signer. Mm -hmm. And that is 
that can win fights. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> See, you two getting on. <laughs> you can't imagine what it's like not to hear your native tongue in four years. Well, hell, I can't imagine two weeks in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks in Boston. <laughs> I'm gonna choke you. <laughs> Two weeks in Boston. <laughs> it looks like this pony's got big eyes for Django. <laughs> it is a soaring eagle that attracts her attention. Not the plucked <laughs> chicken. <laughs> Don't be so down on yourself. Oh, he's suspicious. Yeah, me too. You know that you like. Oh, oh. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know him. You don't know him. No. If you say so. Damn, so he really does suck, huh? <laughs> He's about to ruin everything for no reason. He can just keep his mouth shut. If it was my money, I wouldn't pay no $12,000 for him. 9000 Let me be clarify how this whole negotiation came about. You see, it wasn't me who came to you to sell it. Sure what? It was you who approached <laughs> me to buy one. Sure what? Now that $9,000 figure Bright Boy's been banning about, that ain't too far off from riding. If I wanted to sell Eskimo Joe for that, I could do so any day of the week. It was on your ridiculous offer of $12,000 that made me even consider it. Mm -hmm. Here you have a deal, Eskimo Joe, $12,000. Hooray, Doctor, hooray, and a wise decision that is. So they're making him think that, like, if they just offer too much money, he's suspicious. So they're trying to make it seem like they're negotiating. But in reality, they pay whatever. And I would need my Mr. Tutter to draw up a legal contract. So say I return in about five days time. I say splendid, doctor. To Eskimo Joe, the black Hercules. <laughs> How you like serving at the big table in the big house, huh? I like it a lot, Monsieur Cannon. <laughs> Maybe it's not quite as much fun as getting to pleasure all the mandingos, <laughs> huh, sugar bear? Well, the doctor here might be interested in seeing Hilter's peel back. Did, did you just speak German or... Did you get to take her clothes off? No, it just talked. And... Oh, oh, so, so, so you haven't seen her back? They're doing that on purpose, aren't Absolutely, they? Absolutely, yeah. Hilde's got something like four lashes on her back. Look, Look at that, Doctor. It's like a painting. Look at that. Calvin! We are eating. I know I want to look at her whipped up back. After dinner then, Stephen. After dinner. But the acting in this is top notch. Mm -hmm. Like Leonardo DiCaprio is kind of killing this character. Because it's not easy to do an accent like mm. that and really... I just got you done up. Come on, here. <clears throat> You said you ain't know him. Oh, no. I don't. Why is you lying to me? Lying. Then why is you crying? You scared me. You stay right here. He's in a tattle. He's the best actor in this movie, earlier, though. You'd be willing to part with Hildy. Oh, yes. Hurry up, goddammit! You just interrupted Dr. Schultz here. Sorry, Dr. Schultz. <laughs> My ears ain't well for damn these days. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Candy, could I get a word with you in the kitchen? You mean get up out of my chair? If then you could manage it. <laughs> I'm not eating it after that. <laughs> uh -huh. Get me in the library. Get up around here, you blame me. Uh, fine, fine, <laughs> friend Stephen. I, I will be alone momentarily. <laughs> not mean serious business, I guess, the library. Adult supervision is required. <laughs> How could you stand yourself? What is the matter? Them mother ain't here to buy no mandingos. They wants that girl. What the hell are you talking about? Hmm? They playing your ass for a fool. <laughs> they here for that girl. What girl? What, Hildy? Yeah, Hildy. He just bought Eskimo Joe. Did I... he give you any money? No, not yet, but then they go. he ain't bought Diddly, but he's just about to buy. Who he come here to buy when I interrupted him. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they go through all that trouble? They doing it because Django's in love with Hilde. She then probably sell her. his wife. Let him have her. Now, why that German gives a f who that up to some is in love with, I'm sure I don't know. <laughs> why this whole snake oil pitch about Mandingo's in? You wouldn't pay no never mind to no $300. But that 12000 that made you real friendly now, didn't it? This is how it's so Tarantino, because the deals. The deals and the switcheroos. <laughs> His wife, huh? Those lying goddamn time wasting. Oh, no. Now he's mad. I was beginning to think that you and that old crow run off together. <laughs> <laughs> be a hell of a note, wouldn't it? <laughs> Would you be a dear go out there and give them gals an eyeball? 
Hmm? Of course, brother. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Before your exit, we were discussing the possibility of my oh, no. purchasing Brunhilde. Ah, uh, yes. And we will again. In a moment. I mean, if that guy really just needs to be an asshole, charge like... 12 grand. Yeah, just charge 12 grand. Oh, oh no. Who is your little friend? This is Ben. He's an old Joe that lived around here for a long time. Old Ben here took care of my daddy. And my daddy's daddy, who Ben took care of me. I spent my whole life here in Candleland, surrounded by black faces. Why don't they kill us? <laughs> Three times a week for 50 years, old Ben here would shave my daddy with a straight razor. If I was old Ben, I would have cut my daddy's goddamn throat, and it wouldn't have taken me no 50 years to do it neither. But he never did. Why not? In the skull of the African here, the area associated with submissiveness is larger than any human or any other subhuman species on planet Earth. What a demonstration. If you examine this piece of skull here, you'll notice three distinct dimples. If I was holding the skull of, a, of, a, of an Isaac Newton or, or Galileo, these three dimples would be found in the area of the skull most associated with creativity but this is the skull of old ben and in the skull of old ben these three dimples exist in the area of the skull most associated with civility now bright boy i will admit you are pretty clever but if i took this hammer here and i bashed in your skull with it you would have the same three dimples in the same place hey! Don't lay your palm flat on that tabletop there have been a lot of lies set around this dinner table here tonight. Well, damn, that turned, didn't it? I'm <laughs> yeah. surprised he didn't shoot him on sight. He's been quick to just draw the gun. I do believe you were just getting ready to make me a proposition to Bob Hilda. Bring out Hildy. Uh oh. Shut ah! your ass in that. God. Ah! Lay your hand flat on that table. Now, shut your mouth. In Greenville, you yourself said that for the right, you'd be willing to pay what some may consider is a ridiculous ridiculous amount. Twelve thousand dollars. And if y'all want to leave Candyland with Broomhilda, the price is twelve thousand dollars. And I take it you prefer the take it or leave it style of negotiation? <laughs> Broomhilda here is my property. And if y'all think my price is too steep, oh! what I'm gonna desire to do is take <laughs> your family and beat our ass to death with it. Then we can examine the three dimples inside Romilda's skull. The 12K. Uh, Easy. What's it gonna be? May I lift the hands off the tabletop in order to remove my billfold? <laughs> that will. He put the rest back. <laughs> oh! To the oh. man with the exceptional beard. All right, take her and go. Ryan. You make these gentlemen a receipt for $12,000, please. It was a pleasure doing business with y'all. That went kind of too smooth, I think. Yeah, it did. Could you please stop playing Beethoven? Take your hands off the harp. Doc, you can't go in there. Uh, Steven, You Steve. ain't got no business going in there. Let it be. <laughs> a little upset, that's all. He gets ultra offended on his behalf, don't he? <laughs> yeah. White cake. I don't go in for sweets, thank you. He's a dentist. <laughs> you brooding about me getting the best of you, huh? <laughs> Actually, I was thinking of that poor devil you fed to the dogs today. D'Artagnan. And I was wondering what Dumas would make of all this. He wrote the Three Musketeers. If Alexandre Dumas had been there today, I wonder what he would have made of it. You doubt he'd approve, huh? Soft-hearted Frenchy. Alexandre Dumas is black. Well, he didn't know that. That is her, her bill of sale, her ownership history, and of course, her, her freedom papers, doctor. You see? Because <laughs> <laughs> he can't go in that room. It's too much, dude. <laughs> Brunhilde von Schaft. Consider yourself a free woman. You're free once you leave that place. 
Right. I mean, don't count your chickens. I know it, they're looking crazy for some reason. Normally, I would say Auf Wiedersehen. But since what Auf Wiedersehen actually means is till I see you again. And since I never wish to see you again, to you, sir, I say goodbye. It's almost like he lost his accent a little bit. One more moment, doctor. It's a custom here in the South. Once a business deal has concluded that the two parties shake hands. I'm not from the South. But you are in my house, doctor. I think you are a bad loser. And I think you're an abysmal winner. Deal ain't done until the two parties have shook hands. You're gonna throw away $12,000? If she tries to leave here before this loving German shakes my hand, you cut her ass down. I'm not trying to get him to like lose the situation, but maybe just shake that man's hand. Come back and do something later. Don't let your pride get that woman killed. No, I feel like he'll try something if you do that. <laughs> you really want me to shake your hand? I insist. If you insist. Oh. Damn. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. Miss your candy. Ah! <laughs> uh oh. I couldn't resist. Oh man. No. In Tarantino movies, sometimes characters just die that quick. Yeah. With a shootout. Oh man. Damn. That's that red dead right there. Three pause and you're like. He says, sorry, Jesse. <laughs> what do you grab his ass for? The noises. Oh, my God. Oh. He's about to take out this whole house. Just like Uma Thurman took out the crazy ED. Right. I'm coming. <laughs> Dang, they're invading the house after him. Oh, you <laughs> he said, no, cow. Django! <laughs> what? We got your woman. He gonna blow our goddamn brains out. That damn's a promise. Uh oh, throw your gun out. We won't kill him. I swear I for God. And I'm supposed to believe your black ass? I believe we gonna blow this bitch's brains out. Man, believe that. Let me go. I love you. Hold it. I give up. I give up. How does he get out of this? Because it's probably about to be crazy. Oh, no. Uh-oh. An up-tempo song playing. Freedom, this song's familiar. I think Tech 9 made a song off this or something. I don't know why I know that. That was a lot of bloodshed there. I don't know what's about to happen. I mean, he took out a whole community. Well, damn, they went the torture route, huh? Oh, my gosh. Can't you die from being upside down? Probably so. I'm sure you can. Y'all bounty hunters, huh? We found you wanted posters. I got to say, I ain't never heard of no black man hunting before. How'd you like that line of words? <laughs> man, you should have did it on one. Something's about to happen. Miss Law won't see you. She changed her mind about snipping Django. She gonna give him to the LaQuint Dickie people. Well, she didn't waste a minute telling me. <laughs> man, I'm so glad we didn't have to see that. Me either. Oh, he might do it. Yeah, I know. He probably's gonna kill him. You leave what you take with you coming up with all kinds of ways to kill your ass. Most of them ideas had to do with fucking with your fun parts. But truth is, most of them bleed out in about seven minutes. Most of them. <laughs> so they've done it uh, multiple times. We do that shit all the time. Miss Laura, come up with the bright idea of giving your ass to the LaQuint Dickey Mining Company. Till the day you die, you will be swinging a sledgehammer. They're going to take away your name and say, get to work. They're going to work you Then they're going to hit you in the head with a hammer. And that will be the story of you, Django. En route to the Quinta Dickey Mining Company. That place sounds awful. Quentin. There he is. Oh, he looks <laughs> fat, don't he? 20 years later. I said a white boy. Shut up, Black. How'd you like to make $11,000? <laughs> you win that? 11500 actually. And y'all rode right past it. You big damn Blackie. We're not bandits. It ain't illegal. He sounds Australian. You can't steal it. Got to earn it, white boy. You got something to sign like you say it. $11,500 fortune waiting for you back at Candyland is in the form of a wanted dead or alive bounty on Smitty Bacall and the Bacall gang. He sounds like Dr. Schultz. <laughs> y'all can ride back there and y'all go get that money. 
What did these jokers do again? <laughs> I got the handbill right here in my pocket if you let me get it. Get it out. <laughs> Only dead or alive. Smitty backhoe and the Smitty backhoe gang. I rode in the Candyland on a horse with my German white partner. We finally found the ass laying low in Candyland. My partner got killed. Calvin Candy got shot. But them four men are still back there. They still want it. You tell us who they are and we turn you loose. You give me a pistol, one of them horses, and $500 of that 11500 Now I'll point them out to you. Now why would a slave have worn a dead or alive handbill? <laughs> Did that black ride in the candy land yesterday? Just tell him, just tell him. Yeah. They walked us from the Greenville auction and he rode in on a horse with a white man. Was a black his slave? He wasn't no slave. Can't Baby, man. that's the uh the the sheriff? that's the sheriff from Kill Bill, right? I, I thought so, but you know, the only really way I ever recognized him was the way he talked to his son, because he called him son number he's one. Like, yeah, he's like <laughs> that's the guy who's like, Well, since it don't cost nothing to think nothing, well that's what I think or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> son Kid. number one. Yeah. Massa got shot. Who shot him? The German. Well, what was he? Barney Honest. You got a deal. Got one more condition. Let them men go. That. Time come, you let me help you kill him. Hey, <laughs> you're a funny bugger. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. You got yourself a deal, Blackie. Got yourself a deal, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Look at them. They're like, how the heck did he convince them? <laughs> we gonna give you that pack horse over there. I ain't riding a horse with no goddamn dynamite on his back. Why don't you take them sticks off that horse and stick them in his cage? No, no. No. <laughs> don't blow up. Be careful with it. Damn, y'all ain't seen Lost. I've just had the sarge fixed. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is it gonna be his song again? They're gonna tell the legend of that black man for a long time, mm -hmm. aren't they? <laughs> you he let them out, right? I don't think yet. Oh, oh they're free. Yeah. Well, they're shackled, right? Throw me up that dynamite. <laughs> yeah, I was scared because I'm I, lost. They act like if you trip. I know they're like. <laughs> they're well, like, their their dynamite's been there for yeah. a really long time. So they, it's unpredictable. It like, yeah. yeah. I knew he was gonna go blow this house up. Look. <laughs> He's been waiting his whole life to see that. <laughs> That's crazy. Why is he hammering like that? He's working on his birdhouse. Yeah, but that's weird. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Taking a quick bath. Why is he watching them? You haven't played Red Dead. That's how you bathe. <laughs> I'd have bathed like a man back then. I'd have stood up in there. You won't catch me with my legs in there like that. <laughs> you got your reason to die your It's still in writing. That's kind of dope, right? Yes. And there's no blood on it. How perfect. Aww. That man helped him out a lot, didn't he? I'm gonna miss that character. What a cool ass dude. Oh, he said it in German for him. Uh oh. That man's got a lot of ammo, don't he? It's me, baby. There's got to be one more, like, showdown, right? Right. I mean, I think it has to be with Samuel. Oh, here we go. Right. Because he ain't dead yet. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> Gipping along. By and by. By and by. Oh. Y'all going to be together with Calvin in the by and by. Just a bit sooner than y'all was expecting. Be 
the crash. Last time I seen you, you had your hands on my... Is silent here, baby. Oh, no. All you black folks, I suggest you get away from all these white folks. Not you, Stephen. You right where you belong. <laughs> He's about to sneak out yeah. and run in. <laughs> I said, tell Miss Laura goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. <laughs> Bro, how'd she go that way? <laughs> Physics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Give us one more funny line. I count I six shots. I count two guns. You said in 76 years on this plantation, you've seen all manner shit done. It. You didn't mention kneecap. Oh, God! <laughs> Mother! Definitely! 76 years, Stephen. How many do you think you see come and go? Huh? 7,000? 9,000? I am that one. 10,000. <laughs> Tarantino, he, like he shot him in the kneecap and the blood splattered the wrong way. He's doing that. I think he's doing it on purpose. They gonna catch your black ass. Everybody else is gonna be looking for you. But they gonna oh, find your ass. <laughs> and when they do, oh, 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 what they gonna do to your ass? They ain't gonna just kill you. Just candy land. You can't destroy candy land. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> little troublemaker. Hey, big troublemaker. I wonder if this is going to end like every Tarantino movie. It just says the end. <laughs> just quick. And then we have to guess what happens. Right. <laughs> I was in a burnout. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that is? You know what they're going to call you? The fastest gun in the South. Let's get out of here. There we go. That's the end. Really? All right, guys. So that was Django Bay. What did you think about it? It was funny, right? It was. It was just an interesting tale. I mean, I, the whole time I was just hoping it would go. It would end the way it did, and it, it did. It was like a western or something. So last time, and uh, what's that movie called? We just watched the one with Kurt Russell. Oh, uh, Death Proof. Death Proof. And Death Proof, I was like, Quentin Tarantino's like, you want to make a car chase movie? I'll show you how to make a car chase movie. I feel like he takes every genre of movie and he tries to like recreate it in his own way. So this was his his shot at a Western. Right, because really. the last one before was his shot at a like World War II movie. And we've seen his shot at like a Kung Fu movie. Yeah. So Tarantino likes to just take all these different genres and put and his just like reimagine style on it, it. Yeah. Right. Uh, I thought this movie was really funny, man. I thought that Samuel L. Jackson was the funniest character. Yeah, he was uh, hilarious. No, I really liked the German guy. The German guy was cool. I really liked his accent. I just thought this movie was funny. It yeah. was so funny. I don't know how I'm going to put it on YouTube, but it was funny. Yeah, it was just, I guess, an interesting tale of how, like, I guess it was a love story, you could kind of say. It was right. a Western love story. Right, it was like a coming to age story in a yeah. way, yeah. Uh, I thought Leonardo DiCaprio's character was, he. well, he did a really good job portraying the character. His, All the acting was good. Yeah, the acting was phenomenal yeah, in this. it was good. There's not much to say. I mean, it was just obviously a liberation story. It was a really great movie. And I just thought it was hilarious, man. It was so funny. And I just think all the acting in this was top notch. Yeah. Absolutely. It was the first one without chapters. So you kind of like, we, we didn't get too much of like a back, like, you know how it'll show the character and then it will show like how, what they were doing yesterday or something like Tarantino that. Tarantino time jumps a lot. Right. This one stayed, for the most part, this one stayed linear. Like if there was a backstory, you could definitely tell just by the way the film was like, when it showed him and his wife escaping, mm -hmm. just the way he, it was shot, it just could, you could see it was a backstory. It was like a know. different frame rate or yeah, something. Yeah, it was just yeah. different. And so they went to like 30 frames a second or something yeah. and then slowed it down or something. Super interesting for sure. I think that the way then in the beginning they would like murder someone in cold blood and then like, wait, 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 it's cool, it's <laughs> yeah. cool. That was so funny to me because it's like ass backwards, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I thought everyone seeing Django riding around on a horse, like their reactions to it was funny. Yeah. This this movie was all about the facial expressions. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of facial expressions and stuff in this one. And ultimately, man, I'm just glad that he was able to take out 800 people and get his wife back. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was kind of accomplished. We, it, you don't get many like that. Well, it kind of felt like uh, 
it kind of felt like death proof in a way. Well, it kind of reminded me of the Kill Bill scene also, just how over the top. Because mm -hmm. like when she killed all those people, like the Yakuza's and stuff, when she went there, it was so ridiculous how many people she was able to right. kill. And this one gave me the same exact. Yeah, like, Terrence, feeling you know, in, in those moments, um, like the big fight scene moments, he has a crazy way of like the blood splatter. The because you said it and he like was like aiming people in different directions, but also the sound effects. If you like listen really closely at him, they're just so unique. He do like, things fight. that are like sorry to interrupt you. He does things that are he's kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> like you get slapped and your face turns the wrong way. Like that's what he does in his movies, because it's almost like it's jarring on the eye because it's not natural. And it mm -hmm. really makes you like notice it. Like the one girl got shot in the front and then went sideways. Yeah, she, she went in a different the, room. Yeah, right. And just little stuff like that. I think it's funny how Tarantino does it. There was something else I was going to mention. It was about the way that he films. There was something else of genius that I was going to throw in there, but Tarantino just does a really good job with this And he stuff. had the goofiest character in that one because he was like a, he was like an Australian guy. And Django literally convinced them to let him free. <laughs> like, what the heck? Right. Like, of course. I know what I was going to say. It's, it's the way that, uh, like Tarantino, for example, like something that bothers me about TV shows, for example, like I can't stand when I'm watching like an action movie and the main guy with the gun, they'll take 700 shots at him and they can't hit him, but mm -hmm. then he can hit everyone. He's got perfect aim. I think in TV, there's so many serious shows and there's movies where they really try to make you believe that's real life. Mm -hmm. And it just comes across so bad and so dumb. And you would imagine they'd find a better way to do it. So what Tarantino did was say, instead of like making it corny and instead of making it like Instead of trying to make you believe it's convincing and real, I'm just going to go in the complete opposite and make it as ridiculously over mm. the top as humanly possible. Like the guy's hiding behind a dead body that's just laying on the floor. Every, I mean, there's no, ain't, the guys aren't laying on their stomach shooting them. They're up above them and they're still not able to hit them. And yeah. It just doesn't make sense. But I think it's really funny. Yeah. Kind of like the way he uses sound effects, like little like whoops and pops and stuff. Yeah, like things you would use on like little editing videos for like games or something. Mm -hmm. So funny. That's what makes him unique. And I also like in most of his stories where, like something will happen and you'll have the callback moment from the person who taught you, like kind of like Pi May and Kill Bill, but yeah, it was yeah. King Schultz in this one. And I really like that. Right, I really yeah. like that Django would take his like verbiage and, you know, use it later on. Cause right. I kind of like that in Terrence, you know, he has like sensei moments, I guess you can say for people. Yeah. There's always like a mentor or something. Yeah. And I, I like it cause it, it's kind of like, it makes the story better in a way. It just makes me wonder why is Tarantino so obsessed with making stories about assassins and bounty hunters and just like <laughs> and deals just murder. He always is making deals. Right. Like <laughs> even in the I guess pre Civil War times, we're making twelve thousand dollar deals. <laughs> There's two things that Quentin Tarantino loves more than anything on this earth, baby. That's toes and assassinations. I didn't see any toes in this one. Oh, I'm sure if you look back in hindsight, there was some toes. I saw a lot of horse toes. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. what it was. I saw a lot of horse toes stomping in the mud. What was your What was your favorite part of the whole movie? Uh, I think Samuel Jackson was so funny. I mean, he's so funny. I, to be honest with you guys, man, I thought Samuel L. Jackson's character was like three times better than everybody else's character because yeah. this was just so. I mean, it was just so funny. To he see was a role. good. He was a good villain. Leonardo DiCaprio was good. Yeah, he was also a good villain. They were both. Those two were good villains. I, I thought this movie was so funny. I thought this was. I don't know that it was my favorite Tarantino movie, but it was up there. I mean, it was definitely top three. Yeah, I I, I just like it was unique. I, I think still like Kill Bill. I love Kill Bill. And I, and I loved Inglorious Bastards, too, because just like thinking back on that movie, it was actually like the way everything. If you like think of it in the terms of how everything was at the time, it was just unique. It was a unique film. Yeah, it was. It really was. It felt a lot like this one. This one's very unique, too. So. I'm really excited to see Hateful Eight at this point. I will say, though, the only thing about Tarantino is his movies do become slightly predictable. Like, I just knew in the end they were going to blow the house up. Like, it was so obvious because they done the exact same thing in, uh, in Glorious Bastards. But I mean, if the formula works, you know, but all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you guys should definitely go hit this up on Patreon. The full uncut reaction is going to be over there because obviously we're going to have to edit this thing yeah. down and make it basically suitable for youtube to say that it's okay to advertise on this video because if not they'll pull the video and all that stuff and they'll just give me problems so uh yeah definitely like the video help us get us in the algorithm you know hit us up on patreon and we'll see you guys on the next one